Hi, Adam. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Cindy, Lara, hey. Hello. Hello. We have some other attendees hanging out over there too, so we'll say hi to them. But we got a hundred people registered, so your popularity is strong. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Karen called in. Hi, it's Karen. Her. Yeah, I see yeah, you I'm on here. Too, Karen. Thank you. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Chris, yeah, thank you for having us. How was workout today? It was good. Good. Yeah. yeah. It was a hard day, but it was good. Mm -hmm. good. A lot of different things going on, and a lot of people joined us. Got my first chat. I was just checking. I'll check all the chats so that you guys can stay focused on what you got to say. I do. I got a couple, oh, yeah. I got a couple of emails earlier today. Um, for those that were really intelligent and wanted to make sure that they got their uh, questions in, I got a couple. So. Cool. Just so you guys know, um, there was one coach who's a donor who uh, reached out and said, hey, can I have my kids call in for this? Because they'll be very inspired. And I'm like, yeah, the more the merrier. So. Um, it'll be good. I also think, Adam, it's a great idea that you're moderating the chat because when you're trying to talk and pay attention to the chat, it's too difficult. And so then he'll be, he'll be your assistant coach on the side. Laura, nice to meet you. I've never met you. Sorry you can't see me. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Your voice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want to grab some water or anything, we got about five minutes, but... As I told you, the run of show will be pretty simple. Um, you did a good job dressing up. Well done. Way to show your Team USA pride. Didn't even uh, plan it either. What's that? <laughs> no planning. This happened. Well, I mean, I, I mean, asked her like a few minutes ago, but we, I was already wearing this, so. <laughs> uh, right there. You're already just synergized. Boom. <laughs> awesome. Wait, so are people here? Okay. Uh, there's 16 Hey, people. Lindy. They can hear us. Yeah. They can see Lindy, us. Uh, <laughs> hey, Lindy, fashion police, fix your collar. Hold it down. Uh, no, it should, it's like, it should be popping. Yeah. Right. Pop it. <laughs> you rock. Okay. <laughs> You can play some music in the background if you want for four minutes, so it's not like <laughs> super awkward silence. I feel like it's just gonna not go through cle clearly, and then it's gonna be even worse. Yeah, I guess <laughs> something fun um, that the whole world can know about. Uh, Laura, did we uh, get? Did uh, Daniel deliver those feet up um, pieces tomorrow? Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, really exciting. But I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to um, give it to everybody. Just the local um, right. athletes. Yeah. Yeah. But so very maybe, exciting. You're back east right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I have one, so it's okay. Yeah. Now you have two. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you that are the 24 that are attending, you can check out Feet Up because we're all going to start using them. Yeah, that was a pretty fun one. The guy who is delivering them to Lara um, is actually, they were formerly close friends, but are pretty, is pretty close friends with Lauren Gardner, Lauren McFall. So when he caught word from me, he was extremely excited. It usually Wait. takes a lot longer than that. I was gonna say, aren't they based? Like, where are they from? Um, Germany, Germany or something, right? Germany originally, yeah. yeah. Um, but his, he's in the Bay Area. Oh, yeah. Convenient. Mm hmm. Very. And he said that because of the current situation, people have been returning them, and they sit at his, like, he has a personal warehouse, and he can't do anything with them. So he's like, I'll clean them, and I'll take them to Lara. Now, Lara's going to have 
20 of them, so her and Fernando are going to be upside down. <laughs> Don't even start this conversation. <laughs> Please get pictures. Are you guys already? Using it. Yeah, I can. You guys already? You guys already? You guys already have questions coming in. Oh. No. Lorraine heard me. She got got excited. So did Becky. Good job, ladies. We got a two minute warning. So if you want to grab a glass of water, anything like that, go ahead, take a moment to. Well, a minute left, T deep breaths. <laughs> oh, there's a Q and separate Q and A sec section. Um, we'll do Q and A after like the first 30. So I'll kind of give you guys some opportunities to address uh, questions that we've had and then we'll do Q and A. But I mean, on this the thing, there's like a, a button. There is, the yeah. So I'll navigate between the chat and the Q and A. All right, it's time to go. So for those of you that I have had the pleasure of met, 55, 56, and the number keeps rising of attendees that are joining, uh, I welcome you. Thank you donors for participating in this exclusive event. And then for those of you I haven't met, I am the CEO of USA Artistic Swimming. Pleasure to meet you in this digital format. Sorry that I can't see you, but the time will come when we return to normal and I hope I get a chance to meet with you at an event. Um, I would also like to kick it to our partner at USA Artistic Swimming Foundation, who is also responsible for this great opportunity tonight and give the opportunity to Karen Rosalowski to speak to each of you. Adam, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for putting this together. Um, sorry, no video. I ended up in a place where there was uh, not a camera, so I had to go without video. But I just want to say I'm Karen Roslowski, and I'm the president of the USA Artistic Swimming Foundation. Um, I've been in this sport for over 50 years. I started when I was eight, and I swam for the Walnut Creek Aquanuts and for Ohio State, and was actually on the national team in the early 80s. Um, I am proud and honored to serve as the president of the Synchronized Swimming, excuse me, the Artistic Swimming Foundation, and working with a dedicated a board of, of 10 people who are trying to raise monies for this sport and the, for the good of the sport. Um, we do fund, the foundation does fundraising for the sport and provides grants to the sport for growth. And since it started in 1984, we've given $2.5 million in grants to help the sport flourish. This year, uh, we started a new partnership with USA Artistic Swimming to do fundraising for both organizations together. And uh, we're going to be launching an annual campaign soon. And out of that, Adam had this idea of making this unique opportunity for our donors and potential donors to be on this call. And so today we have loyal donors and support supporters. We have some athletes on this call, which is fantastic. We have Olympians. You can wave. And we have hopeful Olympic hopefuls. And all of us are going to be really excited to hear from Anita and Lindy to hear about your experience and what's going on and the challenges they're facing. I mean, to have the Olympics right there and then all of a sudden say, just kidding, it's a year. Um, but I do want to take a moment. It would be remiss not to stop and do the proper thank yous uh, before we go on. And that's to thank the people who have continued to donate and support and support of the growth of the sport. I believe this sport grows leaders and champions. Um, 
it, you have to be smart to be a synchronized swimmer. And so the people that come out of this sport are amazing. That's why I believe in this sport. That's why I believe in this foundation. And also, I want to thank all of the people who might be potential donors who haven't donated yet. And thank you to Adam, who threw this idea out of doing this and then made it a reality. And also to Anita and Lindy and Laura for getting on this call and making this happen, because really that's who people want to hear from. They want to hear from you. They want to hear you, your story. So thank you so much. And thank you to Adam for making this happen. And yeah, thank you, Karen. Truly appreciate it. And so now uh, it is my pleasure to introduce your panelists for this evening. Uh, the first face you may recognize if you're familiar with international competition, uh, but she is the most recent hire to our artistic swimming team. Uh, is three-time Olympian and now junior national team assistant coach and the high performance manager Lara Teixeira Cian Cerulio. And then the stars of our show this evening uh, are Olymp uh, 2016 Rio Olympian and Tokyo 2020 hopeful Anita Alvarez and Tokyo 2020 hopeful Lindy Schroeder. So I will give you the format is that I will start with some Q&A, uh, just general get us started, get us going questions. And as I do that, I invite you to use either the Q&A function or the chat function and solicit questions. I will randomly pick some uh, questions so that during the second half of this presentation, uh, those questions along with your name will be addressed directly to the athletes. So we're gonna get it started by allowing you to familiarize yourself with Anita and Lindy. Uh, Lara will come into the play. Uh, I'll bring in some coaching questions for her, but uh, we'll keep it with the superstars of the national team uh, for the most part. So I'll start with Anita, uh, asking Anita, and then followed by Lindy, uh, just to give us a quick, summary of your beginning athletic career, so grassroots, all the way to where you are right now. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say hello to everyone and thank you for joining us and for supporting us and for being here just to listen to our stories and ask questions. Um, it really means a lot to us, so thank you. Um, I'm Anita Alvarez. I am I'm 23 years old. Um, originally from upstate New York, I grew up swimming for the Tonawanda Aquettes until I made my first national team um, when I was 16. I made the junior national team, which required me to move out to California to train full time. Um, that's when I began online schooling to finish my high school, um, trained with the junior national team for a junior world's year, and then moved up to the senior team, um, competed at, I've competed in three world championships and the 2016 Olympics, um, two Pan American Games now, and um, we're on the road to 2020, or now, if you haven't heard, 2021, um, since they've been postponed. Um, yeah, I guess that's a general gist of my synchro, like, career timeline. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Lindy. I started swimming when I was five years old um, and for the first couple of years it was more just strictly for fun I guess um, and then in 2012 I made my first national team um, which was an 11-12 national team and since then I've just kind of worked my way up onto 13-15 and then to junior um, and then to senior and so this is my second year training full-time and I went to Worlds and Pan Ams last summer. Great, thank you for that quick overview. There is so much more detail to their lives that uh, we'll try and dig into this evening. Never capture it in an hour, that's for sure. But uh, we'll, we'll let you get a little bit deeper into the lives of these wonderful young ladies. Uh, first question is, um, how are you doing right now? <laughs> um, that's a pretty general question, but... Um... I mean, surprisingly, I'm doing well for <laughs> given the situation. 
Um, I think there's, of course, a lot going on, and a lot has changed over the past of over the past month, two months, I guess, really. Um, so, yeah, um, in terms of like where my mind is and everything, it's kind of like up and down. You know, every day is a new story. Um, but I think our team has been doing a really good job of staying positive and um, staying connected and united through all of this, even though we are separate. Um, Wendy's over there in Boston right now. Um, some girls are in Florida. Uh, a lot of us are still here in California. So, but of course all at our own homes. Um, so we've done a really good job of staying, I think, connected with each other. We still meet six out of seven days a week um, for training and we still talk and communicate with each other. So I think that's helped to kind of keep me sane um, through all of this. And I didn't make it back home to Buffalo um, with my family. So I am here by myself, um, which isn't always easy, but um, being connected with the team definitely helps and keeps me going every day. So, yeah. How about yeah. you, Lindy? Um, pretty much the same for me. I'm doing well. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. So that's what I'm very grateful for. Um, but yeah, still being connected with the team and training and keeping that part of the schedule as normal as we can, given not having any access to the water is important for us. Um, and it's helped us to adjust to this period. We get um, emails from Denise, especially now, because it's when we would have been in Tokyo and so she'll send us an email every day. We would have been arriving today, or I think today was the day um, for tech team, although I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah, it was, he's nodding his head. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of, it's crazy to think of what life would have been like had this not all happened and then what's going on right now. Um, but I think even still keeping in touch with what the schedule was originally and what our plan was originally helps us keep in mind our goals, even though they are much farther away or the times that we'll hopefully achieve them are farther away than what we imagined. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I had my first surreal moment, like truly surreal COVID-19 changed my life moment yesterday thinking I should be in Tokyo prepared to watch you guys qualify for the Olympic Games, right? Uh, it, and just so that the whole audience knows that was to happen, um, as Lindy alluded to, tech routine tonight, and ultimately team final was is scheduled for Sunday evening. Um, so it is what it is. We are where we are. But uh, just so that you guys kind of live the moments with these athletes right now, that's what their life could have and maybe should have looked like, but we'll, uh, we'll look a year from now, right? Yeah. Uh, next question is how, and you started to talk about it, is how is the team training right now? And I'll invite Lara into the back end of your responses to that to just add a coach's perspective. Um, yeah, do it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we still meet for about four hours a day, um, and then we'll meet separately for duet for a little bit shorter after. Um, but among, we try to keep the same land things we were doing before, so that would involve more of gymnastics and strength training um, with Victor, and then we'll also do more flexibility and ballet oriented stuff with Hana. Um, but each segment lasts about an hour, um, and so in a day we'll do about four things, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, but yeah, we've been trying to expand what we would normally do to get a lot of different inputs um, from different people, from different teams and connecting with different teams. That is all, we're trying to look at it as what can we gain from this instead of what we're losing because it is such a unique time period. Um, and we have an opportunity to do things that we wouldn't get to normally do and strengthen ourselves in ways that we wouldn't normally have the time to yeah and just to add on to kind of what lindy said too um trying to keep a good balance of continuing our training that we were doing before um and also adding in those new inputs um to kind of keep some variety and keep everyone motivated and excited for the next day um so that's been really cool uh 
specifically we've done some real well we've done a lot of things but i can't even i have like a list that i started writing down because there are so many things and i'm like i'm gonna like frame this one day because it's so cool but um we've done some cool collaborations with the, all the pan-american countries so we've worked with um, i think every friday we do a different workout and a different country will lead something so we kind of started it um and then uh, we did a Pilates session with Canada, then we did a whole dance session with Brazil. And so now every, every week, a new country leads something. Um, we did uh, with different sports from USA, so a Team USA workout. Um, we had like, I don't know how many different sports um, and NGBs in there joining us. And we led a stretching session um, while Andrea led it. But, you know, it was kind of, it started from USA Artistic Swimming, which is really cool. Um, and we've done tons of other things too, trying boxing or kickboxing. We've done different dance sessions, um, kind of, yeah, just trying to take everything we can get from the situation. Um, and then also be able to use it to plan kind of for next year and, um, be able to create the best schedule and training plan for us, um, leading into 2021. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to kind of try new things and see what works, what doesn't. Um, what we would like to continue post quarantine um, and all that. So that's been, it's been a cool, a cool experience um, given, again, given the situation. Laura, what's the coach philosophy been around training right now? Yeah, I guess like, um, thanks for having me guys. Um, it was, as soon as we got to quarantine, Andrea's leading us in a, such a good and positive um mindset of like taking the most of it not the, just like being the perspective having the perspective that like the world is like really in a tough situation but we can keep it up and keep it um together and united so and leading all this um collaboration is such a unique opportunity for us for usa artistic swimming to be the leaders and um and adding on for what the athletes just said um they they are leading some workouts with clubs as well, which has been almost like 50 clubs already that they are like leading the workout and engaging with the membership, which is pretty unique. We don't have much time to do that when we are in training. So yeah, I guess the st strategy is like stay united, positive and creating like leaders uh, in and outside. And I want to shout out for um, the, the coaches, the coaching team leading by Andrea Fuentes, which has been like a really, really good leader for us. And uh, Rain and Anna, which is uh, with me, uh, combined the four of us like on the coaching staff. Yeah, um, I think all of them are being really modest. So I will toot the horn for all three of them that are on here. Uh, our team in the Olympic space, at least, is leading the way. Uh, very clearly for the United States of America. And they continue to do some incredible things. Um, they are training with the entire world of artistic swimming uh, this weekend. So I encourage all of you to follow along and take the opportunity to join them. Uh, and then further that, they are on Instagram about four hours out of the day uh, doing their trainings to invite you into their daily lives and uh, enjoy or commiserate in every single workout that they go through. So it, it's really, really impressive. It's nothing that I thought about going into this and they've done something that's really incredible. And if you haven't caught them on NBC and they were uh, highlighted in the Washington Post, these two athletes specifically by picture, um, it, it's, it's a really good thing for our sport. So thank you and congratulations. Um, so next question is, and I'll point this one to Lindy directly. Um, the exciting work that the team and the athletes are doing to inspire, unify the world, Pan Am's, Team USA, USA Artistic Swimming membership through virtual training. We just talked about it. Uh, can you talk about where those efforts came from and then what they've done for you guys in training? Mm -hmm. Um, I think initially the idea was that because we are all stuck in our homes, no matter if that's across the U.S. or across the world, um, that we're in the same situation and we have the unique opportunity 
to be able to train together, um, much more so than if we were scattered in different pools. Um, so I think, I'm not sure exactly which one we started doing, um, whether that was, I think it was just connecting maybe with Israel or I don't know which team, but it was one team at first. Um, and then from there, it kind of just rocketed into different ideas and all these different ideas just coming up pretty much. And like, why not do Pan Ams or the Pan American continent? Why not connect with the whole world? Um, and then we also started connecting with teams just around or clubs from around the US and also from other countries more individually and needing more personal workouts for that as a way that we can help um, or just give back from our team and with our time and what we know. Um, but yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, this is for both of you. Uh, what are you looking forward to most post-quarantine? Um, I think, I mean, I mean, I think the obvious answer, jumping in a pool, <laughs> any pool. Yeah. I actually, I ordered a kiddie pool on Amazon for 12 bucks like a couple weeks ago. So I have that in my backyard, but that doesn't really get past like my ankles. So <laughs> it's not, not the same. Um, for me, I think, well, depending on what we decide to do, um, like we're training now. So if we want to have a little break before we start our new, new season, I guess, um, depending kind of what the timeline goes with that. Um, I'd like to go home, visit my family. I miss them and I'm excited to hopefully get to see them after this. Um, and then, yeah, I'm training in the pool all day. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to being in water. Not much of a land person. <laughs> Linda, you saying you're not coordinated? On land, not as much, no. <laughs> hey, Lindy, show us your ankle. <laughs> yeah, that happened a few days ago, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, Tough, toughing it out, going through it, good. Um, all right, so next one is, uh, and this is for both of you separately, but personally, what are some of your goals? Uh, okay, I'll go. Um, I think short term, long term, there are a bunch of different ones, um, individually with the team with the duet. Um, personally, you know, there, there's so many different ones. But um, I think, in general, um, kind of what I've had in my mind for a long time now is just to be a part of um, the growth of USA artistic swimming and moving back up in the ranks in the world. Um, and I don't really like to say goals like I want to get a gold medal or I want to get this score or this, I want to beat this person or this team. Um, I think those are good in some situations, but for me, it doesn't always, it's not always the best um, way to put it in my mind. So I like to think um, more general. Um, so just kind of being a part of the team and the rise um, back up to the podium, really, I guess. Um, and before I was like, I kind of, I wanted to be a part of the team that helped um, our country get there, but now um, I have changed it a little bit and I want to actually be a part of that. So um, whatever that means, if it means sticking around for longer than maybe I had expected in the beginning. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, I guess that's my goal there with, with the team. Um, competing in the Olympics in general is obviously a dream come true. And um, one of my main goals, but um, being able to compete in the Olympics with a whole team of eight girls, um, I think would be a totally different feeling and like a whole new experience. So um, that for me is like, would be amazing. So that's, yeah. Yeah, um, the short term or kind of yearly short term for me is the Olympics, but long term, as Anita said, the driving force, I think, behind everything that we do is in the long term being able to bring the US and the sport and our sport um, back up to the top and leading from a like statistical ranking point of view other than just um, like how we have been leading now. Um, but I think even if I remember like back when I had to fill out bios for my 11, 12 national teams, I think that's one of the things I wrote down, which what Anita just said reminded me of. So I no matter 
like where any athlete in the system is, I think we're all working towards that one goal. Great. Um, so most of us had the pleasure of watching one of the best performances that uh, the country has put forth, uh, thanks to you guys. Uh, this this recent uh, months, months, early March, right? Feels like forever ago, but it was just over uh, a month and a half ago. Um, what's the team doing to improve upon the performance that you put forth for all of us to enjoy in France? Um, so in France, our strength was our free team. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of focus more on the technical side of things um, for tech elements um, and just that routine in general. We got a lot of really good specific feedback um, from the judges on thir certain things they'd like to see, um, whether that be a small choreography change here or there um, or the little things, but mostly just cleaning everything up and getting stronger and getting better endurance, which we have time to do more time than we, we expected. So that's been a blessing out of moving the Olympics back. Yeah, same thing um, Wendy had said, mostly um, the technical side, I think for the teams um, and especially our free team or no, our, yeah, our free team was the same as last year. So our, with some changes of course, but our tech team was kind of the new one that um, is just, kind of natural, it's gonna need more time to improve. Um, and then also just in the area of endurance and physical fitness for the routines. Um, I think we were in a good place for the first competition of the year for being March. Um, and then of course we just would want to get better from there. Um, so we may have to take a few steps back when we jump back in the pool to <laughs> be able to swim the routines again. But um, I think, yeah, just being able to swim the routines full out from beginning to end. Um, without, you know, that crash. <laughs> yeah, just so everybody knows, uh, we had plans to attend with these two, I think, five events, uh, which would have been the most ever, and then with the Olympic Games, a sixth event. Um, it's going to be a heck of a summer. We'll have a heck of a summer next summer, right? Uh, but uh, next question, and this one will be for Lindy, because there's really a pretty similar follow-up that uh, Anita can better answer. So. Uh, for Lindy, what is the reason for the team's growth and recent successes? Mm -hmm. um, specifically, recent successes, I think with having more time together, we've really gotten used to each other and really gotten used to the machine that we are as a whole um, from the connection from the coaches to us and even just within our group. We all know our roles. We all know what we need to do, um, we know what to expect from each other in competition. I think the main thing for me in France was just knowing how all of us were gonna be when we were in the locker room, getting ready. It's everything is comfortable and we're used to it and we're good with it and we know how to support each other. Um, and then in general, just the support that we have been given and just it seems like there's more of it and more of it all the time from outside people um, and from the different things that we're adding on from within that we're really thankful for and it's what fuels us. Good, thank you. And the follow-up to that for you, Anita, is what's different about this team versus past teams you're on? Yeah, so I've been here um, training full time with national team since 2013. Um, so I've seen a lot of different teams through the years. Um, and I think uh, kind of what Lindy has started to say about um, we really focus on the individuals on the team, not as much on just like we're all here, we're all artistic swimmers, one more into the team, but we really focus on the different strengths and um, personal characteristics of each individual and kind of find everyone's strength and use that to make our team even stronger. Um, so I think that's been one unique thing that has really helped drive our team and help um, make us or separate us from any other teams I've been on. Um, so it makes it clear that each of us has a role 
and what our strengths are. Um, it empowers us a little bit to know that we bring something special to the team um, that maybe the others don't have and that we're putting, we're helping the team in this own, in our own unique way. Um, and yeah, just giving us each a role. I think that's been cool. Um, of course, we're a really young team compared to some teams in the past. Um, so that's also different. Um, the age average is a little bit younger. Um, and I think also the kind of overall commitment um, and like to the program, to uh, each other, to the process, kind of to everything. Um, this is the longest or, and will be now that we have another year, the longest that I've had um, a full team together training, um, which of course is just going to be really important for our growth and improvements. Um, and we've already seen that with only a little over a year. So um, now with an extra year, it's, I think, can just be even better from here. All right. Well, thank you. And I'm going to actually use what you just used there, Anita, uh, to kind of parlay into our Q&A session. Uh, I have received a pretty good list, but I encourage anybody else who wants to submit to go ahead and throw any questions in the chat and I'll just randomly pick through these. Uh, I will say a first name that's associated with the question and then I'll address the question to one, both or all panelists. Um, so from Ireland, uh, first question is, uh, where is your favorite artistic swimming event destination? So I'll throw this to all three of you because Lara's been to a few places too. It can be domestic if you want it to be, or it could be international. So go ahead. Um, I know mine, but a few in 2016, after Junior Worlds um, in Kazan, I went to the 1315 Mediterranean Coman Cup. Um, and that was in Netanya, Israel, which is just a beach town, I guess, in um, Israel, but the hotel was right over the Mediterranean. Um, and so I got to wake up to that every morning. And so I think that was my favorite place that I've been. Um, I don't know. I think my favorite place I've been was Synchro. It wasn't for a competition though, it was a training camp, um, was Malta. I've been there twice before World Championships. It's, if you don't know, it's um, a little island right below Italy, right below Sicily. Um, and it, we're, we stayed right on the water, right on the sea. Um, the people there were really nice and just friendly. Um, so that's my favorite place for that. I think my favorite location for competition was Budapest um, in 2017. Um, I thought the set, I mean, the place where our pool was, it was an outdoor pool. Um, with like a great view of this huge castle in the background. So all the pictures are really awesome. Um, and then I stayed a little bit in the city afterwards and got to explore. So that was cool. Um, I thought it was a beautiful place and yeah. Nice. I think everyone related to water. Uh, I have my favorite, favorite place in uh, Italy, Savona, which was like one of Italy opens that we had back and then. Um, we don't have any more, it's a wood series now. So yeah, with Savona in Italy, it was a really nice location with a beach nearby, yeah, really cool. Awesome. All right, the uh, next question is, so it's around your nerves and there's a, actually a couple questions around it. I, I'm going to specifically ask Courtney's question, and it is, how do you approach competition anxiety, especially for large events? Um, so when I was a lot younger, I used to get incredibly um, nervous to the point of it being detrimental, I think, at some points. Um, but I learned from the coach that I grew up swimming with, Svetlana, to turn or acknowledge that it's just my body's way of telling me that I'm excited to do something. Um, and it can also come in the form of adrenaline, which is something that you can learn to use as a gift because it allows you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do or normally think you could do. Um, and so what I try to do is let the nerves just 
kind of sit in my body um, and then I've learned to use them I think to my advantage so that it comes like I compete better than I would practice per se or things come more naturally to me because I'm able to just recognize what they are and be comfortable with them and like greet them happily. Um, yeah, I'm similar to Lindy in that when I was younger, I would get really, really nervous um, to the point of like crying, getting sick, whatever. Um, so I've been there and <laughs> not saying that I'm completely like nerve free now at competitions because definitely not the case. Um, but yeah, just learning to understand that there, it means you care, you know, it's not, it, it just means that you care and that you want to do well. Um, and then also being able to, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, I'll jump in for Anita really quick. Uh, I haven't known them very long, right? A year. Um, but I have heard stories uh, about some nervous situations and the growth of these athletes is tremendous. So if you're a young athlete on this call, um, they do a lot of hard work and put in a lot of time and it's takes practice too to get comfortable. You're never going to get really comfortable on a deck uh, before you jump in, but they do a lot of work around it. So kudos to both of you two. And Anita's thought is back. <laughs> um, what I was going to say was like before competitions, learning to accept kind of the feelings that you're having, but also, um, just kind of play around. I mean, more experience you have, the easier it'll be, but just learning to play around with kind of what you need and how you want to be or how you need to act or um, what kind of energy you need to have um, and kind of accept that. I think at one point I was always really quiet and like kind of in the zone, like didn't want to waste too much energy on extra things like running around or laughing or like getting warmed up before like I walk out, like I just wanted to be calm and zen. Um, and I think then at one point I saw other teammates doing the opposite and then it made me think like, okay, I need to be like that too. Um, so I think just kind of learning what you need and then also um, and accepting that and allowing yourself to be however that is. Um, and the same with your teammates, kind of learning each other and what each person on your team needs is really important. And I think that's one thing that our team has done a good job of over the past year is learning each other and our different personalities again and respecting that and the different needs of every different athlete um, before they compete. So. I'm going to keep going on something very similar there is uh, in this current space that you're in, what have you done to continue to maintain um, some mental and emotional health? This question comes from Maggie. I can go. Um, I think what I said earlier about staying connected with the team um, has been really important and helped me a lot and not just the team, but also staying connected in general. Um, I think people keep saying like social distancing, but I think it's more physical distancing and not as much like stay. We still want to stay socially connected. Um, so making sure that you're connected with your friends, with your teammates, with your coaches, um, with your family, if you're not with them. Um, just to kind of help you stay sane and not so not feel so alone in this, um, especially because you it's literally everyone, you know, no one here is alone. Um, and I think just the idea of knowing that and understanding that um, has helped too, because everyone's in the same situation. Um, and yeah, finding kind of just being creative with your time and finding new things um, that you want to do that you want to learn. Um, for me, I don't like to sit still. I like to keep busy. So um, at first it was a little bit hard because I went from having no free time in my day and being home for like just nighttime when I go to bed and now like stuck in the house all day long and with only four hours of training instead of eight and everything. So um, for me, I've tried to stay busy <laughs> and sometimes I like over, I still pack my schedule too busy, even though I'm stuck at home somehow. Um, but honestly, for me, it's helped keep me sane. Thank you. Uh, 
I'll give another one to Lindy here. Um, question is from, question comes from Joe. And uh, you guys talked about what you guys were doing with international groups and other national governing bodies, like the Master Xbox. Uh, what are you doing for local clubs? Um, for local clubs, we have a system kind of um, where clubs can DM our team account on Instagram um, and then we will kind of just, we all split it. So all the athletes take a team and we'll go on Zoom and we'll lead private sessions, which are structured mostly on what that team wants specifically. So we'll just ask you, um, like, do you want flexibility, strength, whatever, and then we'll lead a about 45 minutes um, of just working with you. So it's more designed towards smaller clubs and smaller groups of athletes so we can try to share what we know um, and how we are dealing with this situation with all of the clubs. Yeah, that's good. Um, I got one from Laura Lee, and I'm gonna direct this one to Lara, and I am directing at Lara because I know her and I have been working on this project. So uh, the question is, how do you think readjustment uh, will work? Will it be, uh, how long will it be until we're back to normal? Yeah, I guess we are um, always respecting the government, like the uh, governance that like in our state in California, we just had the warning that we're gonna uh, postpone a little bit for a month, the shelter in place. So we are gonna, we're not gonna be having any NSS for our facility or anything until um, 1st of June. Um, and then from there on, we need to, um, we're working on it as Adam said about like having a protocol to resume training and uh, respecting for sure the health of the athletes and everyone that is involved in the facility. So, um, yeah, so the, the plan is still um, with an auto, a lot of unknowns, but we are getting as much as information that we can and making a plan to be like as safe as we can and come back to the pool with the athletes, um, you know, respecting social distance and all the, um, yeah, all, all the information that we have from, from the healthy bodies. Yeah, good, thank you, Lara. Um, Easier question for you guys is how did you choose your tech duet music? You can get more general if you want to on other music too, but this specific question was tech duet. Um, I forget. <laughs> we, it took us a while to find our tech duet music. Um, we were trying to think of ideas for a while. Um, and then I think one day at practice, um, Andrea had just started playing different music um, to see and I think Ruby maybe made a playlist or we all kind of combined and made a playlist together um, of just different songs and then that one came on and it was like kind of like funny at first because I think Lindy you had swam a solo to it before. yeah I had a few years ago so it was kind of weird at first <laughs> yeah. people usually I mean people have swam to that but only in solo so it was like we kind of like joked about it a little bit about swimming to go mm -hmm. for a duet and then like after and then we were kind of like well actually like no one's ever done a tech duet to it and it could be cool because there's so much contrast um so there's like the fast loud parts and then there's like it slows down which is perfect for a tech routine because then you have to like calm and do your element you know so um i think we just played with it for a day um we tried to place the elements in different parts of the music and then that's kind of how it started I guess and then we were like well let's try it out and if we don't like it we can always find something else um and then yeah Not from there yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, there was a question about since you guys are training with so many other sports are those other sports impressed or even intimidated by the skills that you possess and they don't um, yeah, well, not from rhythmic gymnastics, because they're <laughs> incredibly flexible. Um, but most of the other sports, we did a stretching session led by Andrea, which I think was mentioned earlier. 
Um, but they were all impressed with the range of flexibility that we have and need to have. Um, so that was interesting to see because I think we look at like an sort of a hour to 45 minute long stretching session is and not like kicks and stuff like that, but just really stretching is more of a relaxed thing. Um, and so to see other sports struggling with that and respecting that was really cool because it makes you realize what skills you have, um, which is a nice thing to know. Yeah, good. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good question, a tough one. Um, what's the silver lining in the delayed Olympic Games? Um, I think in our team specifically, kind of like I had mentioned earlier, um, we are a young group and we have a lot of potential. And um, I think we have a really strong team of coaches, of athletes and support staff, supporters, everyone right now. Um, and it's kind of, it's only growing and improving every day. Like Lindy said, the support just keeps coming, keeps coming. So um, I think also a lot of feedback that we've gotten from other coaches, other judges, um, is that it's there, you know, the choreography is there or the potential is there, but you guys just need more time and you'll receive the, you know, the points and the whatever, everything that you deserve. So um, now that we have this more time, um, it's kind of just what we've been saying that we need the, all along. So um, for us, we can only take it in a positive way. Um, of course, it makes, it means adjustments to our lives, our school, our plans for the future, um, of course, but I think all of us on the team have had this Olympic goal, Olympic dream. Um, and now after the French Open, um, it was closer, closer than ever. Um, and I think now that we have this more time, even though it is further away, I think it can be an opportunity to be even closer um, than we had ever been. Um, so for us, I think it's really, it's a really great opportunity. Yeah, I think especially for our sport, there's always the need and wanting for more time, whether that be hours in the pool or just general weeks and months. And beyond the initial reaction of kind of having to readjust your plan or your life plan for the next year, however many years it is, really just a gift of time. Um, from just that point of view, obviously, there's a lot of things going on in the world that we can't control and that will impact us and impact the people that we love. Um, but in just, I think time is the silver lining of it, that we have it. Good stuff. Uh, all right. Um, next question comes from, sorry, that last question came from Lorraine. And then this next question comes from Logan and it is, uh, what made you realize that synchro is something that you want to do? Um, I've always loved the water. I think ever since I was a baby, my parents would try to get me out of the lake or the pool with my hands purple and everything, but I would refuse. <laughs> um, so that aspect of it I've known forever. Um, and then I think it was around when I was 10 to 12 is when I really had to pick the sport as something I wanted to pursue seriously. Um, and I think that came from just, again, the love of the water. Um, and in our sport, we're able to manipulate it and use it um, to support ourselves and to create things. Um, and for me, my love of the sport has always really been about that um, and like what I can do with my body and with the water um, has always been really cool for me just being able to discover that on a daily basis. Um, and for me, uh, my mom actually did the sport growing up and was a coach when I was younger or since before I was born. Um, so I kind of grew up on the pool deck alongside her um, while she was coaching. I've been around the sport forever. Um, but I did do tons of different sports growing up um, and was never pressured into doing synchro or artistic swimming. Sorry. Um, so I think that has 
been beneficial to why, or I guess key to why I'm still here. Um, it was my choice and not, you know, not forced into it by my parents. Um, and at times when I was, like I mentioned earlier, really nervous, um, even when I was in like the novice stages, nervous to go to practice <laughs> or like crying because I don't know, whatever before like practice, not even a competition. Um, you know, they had said like, we don't have to do this. You don't have to go. You can, you can go and do softball. We can do this or that. Um, and I was kind of always the one that said, no, like I'm going, I want to go. Um, and then same as Lindy, once I hit that, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 13 age, I guess. Um, you have to kind of narrow it down and put more focus and attention into uh, one or two sports. And I think I narrowed it down to the, like synchro, dance, and softball at one point. Really random. But that's where I ended. Um, and then I chose to just keep going with artistic swimming. Um, I think it was like a combination of so many different skills and sports and everything all into one that drew me in. Um, I felt like I was getting not the best of both worlds, but the best of like 10 worlds um, mm -hmm. by doing it. Um, and then as I've grown over the years in the sport, I've um, learned to love a lot of different parts of it. Um, more so recently, I've learned to love the artistic side of it more um, than maybe I did when I was younger. So, yeah. Awesome. Right, another easy, pretty easy question for you to answer is, do you have any hobbies and, um, what do you do? So what do you do outside of Synchro? This comes from Addy. Um, in the past two years, um, to be completely honest, not really anything um, other than school, because <laughs> um, I do do online school and try to keep up with academics to the best of my ability um after training so but other than that before it was just kind of the two worlds um being combined together all the time um i enjoy things like photography um and just exploring more what's around me um hiking those kind of things just appreciating wherever i am in the world, um, especially with the traveling that Synchro allows me to do. Um, yeah, similar to Lindy. <laughs> uh, don't always have much time for many other things, um, but since I've graduated high school, um, I've kind of taken my time with my college degree and um, had a few years where I've taken the year off to focus on training um, and working to save up money to be able to support myself and everything out here. So um, I've been able to learn a little bit more about myself and kind of other things that I enjoy outside of sport, because I think it's important to learn and know, especially for when that time comes when I want to be done with the sport. Um, so, I mean, I just have like little hobbies, I guess. I don't have like a hu uh, another huge passion that I'm like ready to jump into post sport, but um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not like a good drawer, but I kind of like drawing and doodling. <laughs> um, and I've learned, I started like in cooking, especially more recently in quarantine. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not, nothing like that interesting, I guess. No, it's good. It's good. Um, all right. So we are at about a five minute warning right now. Just want to give everybody a heads up. I got two more questions that I'm going to give. I'm sorry that I couldn't get but uh, I only have so much time as these two have admitted they still have a full schedule even though they are quarantined like the rest of us. Um, I wanted to ask uh, who you look up to the most in the artistic swimming world? Um, inspirationally or coaching you go for it too. Yeah for me I don't think it's ever than one specific person, but just everyone I've been around and been able to see um, on YouTube. I think there was a lot of time when I was little just spent watching video after video um, of whoever it was competing internationally. But I think I specifically learn um, a lot visually and so from whoever I was being coached by at that moment, um, they would become like an idol in some 
form, whether that be in their grace or their flexibility or their strength. Um, and then I've always looked up to um, Andrea as well, ever since I was a little girl watching from YouTube. Um, but now I get to be by her side every day, which is just like the most amazing thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I also grew up watching tons of YouTube videos. Um, I would spend, we would only practice for two and a half, three hours, maybe max on my, when I was growing up. So, um, I had a lot of extra time and would be like upside down. I had a feet up actually growing up. So I'd be upside down, like doing synchro legs there or on YouTube or both at the same time. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the same thing. I actually grew up watching Andrea a lot on YouTube. So when they announced that she was going to come be our coach, I was like, no way. Um, and then kind of whenever you have that childhood idol and then you get to meet them and they like exceed your expectations of a person that they are, um, I think is a really cool thing. And um, yeah, she's just been a great mentor for our team, um, a great coach and just well-rounded person in general. Um, so it's been really special to be able to learn from her over the past year or so, um, not just about synchro and how to do a ballet leg, but um, just about how to enjoy life and how to dig deeper into yourself and learn more about yourself and your teammates and um, just kind of the world and the life that we live in general. So, um, yeah. Laurie, you have anything at, to add there? I think you uh, were an Andrea Fuentes fan too. Yeah, I just want to add one thing. And I was in New Zealand and I text Anita saying, I cannot believe that you guys have Andrea. She's going to be your coach. And she, Anita said, yeah, I know. I'm going to cry. So we were so excited. And now I'm really honored to be part of the team. And I, I guess she's a mentor and she's a leader that like really look after us and try to get the best in the water and out of the water. So she makes us better human beings. So yeah, I guess. I grew up watching her and like it's been really, really good to have her uh, on my side, like as a, a team coach, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that you actually answered the last question, which was um, what have your coaches done for you? I know that there are three other coaches, Lara included in there, um, uh, but I won't force you to elaborate any further. Uh, it's a great coaching staff. I'm fortunate to work with each and every one of the four of them every single day. Um, so uh, with that, I want to thank every single person who attended this. And most specifically, uh, if you could give your virtual round of applause to Nita Alvarez, Wendy Schroeder, Laura Teixeira, Cian Cerulio, and Karen Rozalowski for all that they have done for us this evening. Uh, I will let you know that this w is being recorded right now and will be placed on the YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel is USA Artistic Playing, and there is a whole lot more Anita Alvarez and Lindy Schroeder sitting on that YouTube channel because basically every exercise, workout, routine that they've done over the last month is posted there. Uh, you can catch some Bill May and the rest of the team action as well. So. Go ahead and visit that. I know that's been asked a couple times on the chat, and we're trying to give you as much as we can. So we hope you utilize it. Thanks, everybody. Take Thank care. Stay so healthy. Much, everyone. Stay healthy. We'll see you all at events soon. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>